One of the most requested videos on this channel is how to edit a vlog, or more specifically, how to edit a GoPro video, since we are GoPro vloggers. Well, in this video, I'm gonna break down my six step video editing tutorial for beginners. These video editing tips apply no matter what kind of camera you're using. And best of all, the video editing software that I'll be using is free. It's called DaVinci Resolve, and it's very similar to Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere, but the main difference is that you don't have to pay for it. But anyway, let's dive into this video editing tutorial. I'm doing this entire demonstration on a Mac computer, but it's more or less the same process on a PC. Also, this is a beginner tutorial. I'm not gonna be diving into every single part of Resolve, but rather I'll be showing you how to get up and running fast. So the first thing you wanna do is download Resolve. Go ahead and Google DaVinci Resolve and go over to their website. Download the latest version. Notice there are two versions, a free one and a paid one. If you wanna pay, you can, but honestly, you can accomplish quite a bit with the free version. So I'm gonna use that one for now. When you click on it, notice that there's DaVinci Resolve 18, which is a beta, as well as DaVinci Resolve 17. 17 is the older version and the 18 is the newer one. The beta one might be a little bit more unstable, but it will have the latest and greatest features. So that's the one that we're gonna use. Go ahead and enter your information, register to download, and begin the download process on your computer. Now that we have Resolve, let's go ahead and open it up. It's gonna open up to this project page, and if you have worked with Resolve before, it will show you your previous projects here. But if this is your first time using Resolve, go up to File and New Project, and enter the name of your project, and hit Create. After you create the new project, go down to the right-hand corner and click on the wheel icon to open up the project settings. There are a lot of different settings in here, and you definitely don't need to click through all of them, but there are a few you want to pay attention to. The first one is the timeline resolution, which is the overall resolution of your video. Most people will pick a minimum of 1080 HD, but you also might want to do 4K, which is the 3840 by 2160 option down here. This is what we're going to pick. The other thing you want to set is the timeline frame rate, and make sure it's the same as your playback frame rate and pretty much everything else in here, just leave it on default. Now, if these are settings that you're gonna use often, you may wanna save them as a preset. So go up to Presets and hit Save As. And if you wanna use the preset in the future, make sure it's selected and then hit the Load button. So next, let me show you around DaVinci Resolve. So down here, you're gonna see the different workspaces or tabs that you can select. So the first one is the Media tab. This is where you import and organize your media. Next is the Cut tab, where you can make basic cuts to cut down your footage. Next to that is the Edit tab. This is where you're gonna be assembling your story, and this is probably where you're gonna spend the most amount of time. Next to that is Fusion, which is a motion graphics and animation software, kinda like Adobe After Effects. Next, we have Color, which is where you color grade or color correct your footage, followed by Fairlight, which gives you pro-level audio editing tools. Finally, we have the Deliver tab, which is where you export your final video. If all of this looks really intimidating, then don't worry, because we seriously do spend most of our time over in the Edit tab. But the very first thing we want to do is go over to the Media tab and start to import your footage. So you have a couple of different options to do this. The first way is to go up to File, Import, and Media and select your footage. Or you can hover your mouse down to the Media pool, right click, and select Import Media, which is also Command or Control I as a shortcut. Or you can go out to your desktop and select your exact clip and drag and drop it into the Media pool. You can also do this for an entire folder if you want to import the contents of your whole folder. If you see this warning about the frame rate pop up, it probably means that you shot your footage at a frame rate that's different than the project frame rate that you selected. And it's no problem, just go ahead and click change. The second step is to cut down your footage. There are a few different ways to do this in Resolve. One way is to use the Cut tab. This is useful if you want to cut down a lot of clips. But for me personally, I like to go straight to the Edit tab and do all of my cuts in the timeline. This makes it much easier for me to assemble my story as I'm cutting. Now that we're here in the Edit tab, let me give you a tour. In the upper left area, you'll find the Media Library, which is where we find all of the clips that we just imported. Up top are some buttons to help you organize your media. You can use this slider to zoom in and out of your media. You can click this button to give you a metadata view, this button for a thumbnail view, or this button for a list view. You can also click on the magnifying glass to search for a certain clip and filter the clips by a certain field. 
Personally, I like the thumbnail view. In the middle is a preview screen, which is where we can preview the media. The bottom area is the timeline, which is where you assemble all of your media into a story. On the upper right hand side above the timeline, you'll see a lot of buttons to help you visualize and interact with your timeline. The main one that I use is this slider here, which helps you zoom in and out of your timeline. On the far left, you'll find a button called Timeline View Options, and this helps you also organize your timeline in certain ways. For example, this button right here can show your audio waveforms, or you can have it disappear if you don't want them there. You can also change whether your timeline is viewed as a film strip, a thumbnail, or a simple view. And finally, you can change the track height, which adjusts the height of your video as well as your audio. This is all up to personal preference. There are no right or wrong settings here. Next, you want to assemble the primary footage or the A roll of your vlog into a timeline that makes sense. For us, because we're travel vloggers, we typically vlog on a linear timeline. So everything goes in the order that it was shot. So as you can see, I'm just dragging and dropping my clips from the media pool over to my timeline. Now, as you're doing this, be sure to avoid any gaps unless you want these to be here. Otherwise, your video is going to play like this. If you do have any gaps, you can just move your clips to be closer together, or you can just click on the dead space and click delete. Now that we've assembled our primary footage, the next thing we want to do is cut down that footage. This is when it can be really helpful to have your audio level showing if you have any audio or sound in your video and you intend on keeping it. So you can see here that as Martin is speaking, the audio levels are up, but here towards the end, it kind of trails off and gets lower. So this is probably a part of the clip that we're going to want to cut out. So the first way to cut a clip is to use the blade tool. You can go up to this blade tool here and click it so that it turns red, or you can press the B key on your keyboard. Now hover your cursor over the area that you want to cut and click. Next, you want to hit the arrow icon or hit A on your keyboard and select the clip that you want to delete and hit the delete key on your keyboard. You notice that again, we have this gap where if we play it back, we're going to see that gap appear in our final video. So if you want to avoid this, you have two options. You can click on that dead space and delete it, or if you want to undo everything, it's Command or Control Z will undo all of that. And so we can click again on this part that we want to delete, and instead of just hitting the delete key, we can hit Shift Delete. This gives us a ripple effect so that we can delete not only the clip, but also that gap. We're going to hit Command or Control Z to undo that, and I'll show you the next way to cut the clip, which is to use the Trim tool. So for this to work, you cannot have the blade tool selected. You want to make sure to have the arrow tool or the trim tool, which is right next to the arrow tool selected. But notice that now if I hover my cursor at the beginning or the end of a clip, you see the trim tool appear. And now I can click and drag my clip left or right to trim my clip. If I do that, notice that a gap does appear. So be sure to delete that. Now say we want to cut out the middle of a clip. If we want to do this, then our best bet is to to use the blade tool. So make sure that you have that selected. And now you can go to the middle of a clip, click twice to make your cuts, go back to the arrow tool to select and delete or shift delete. Now, as you're making your cuts, it might be helpful to have snapping enabled. To do this, just go ahead and click on the magnet icon. When snapping is enabled, it gives us a little bit more granular control as we're trimming or cutting our clip. And one of the final ways to cut your clip is to use the input output method. To do this, click on a clip in your media library to preview it and click on the I key on your keyboard to mark the input and the O key to mark the output. Doing this is pre-cutting your clip. So you can now drag down that pre-cut clip onto your timeline. Note the two icons here. One icon allows you to only drag down the video piece without the audio and the other icon allows you to drag down only the audio without the video piece. If you want both the video and the audio, then just click anywhere on the preview screen and drag down to your timeline. So now use these methods to go through and cut your primary footage down to only the parts that you want to keep in your final edit. The third step is to add your B-roll or the clips that support your primary footage. Go to your media library and click and drag the clips to the timeline so that they go above your primary footage. Note that the B-roll also has audio attached to it. 
If you don't want the audio, you can mute the clip by clicking on the audio level of the clip and pulling it all the way down. Or hold the Alt or Option button on your keyboard and click on the audio clip to select it. And then delete. This is also how you can delete any B-roll or even primary footage that you accidentally drag into the timeline and decide later that you don't want. Once you have your B-roll on the timeline, you can use all of the tools mentioned in the cut section to cut down those B-roll clips. You can also click and drag those clips to reorder them. I definitely recommend having the snapping feature activated if you're going to do this. This next section is a bonus and not an official step because I don't usually do this often, but if you want to, you can add effects such as titles and transitions. If you do choose to use them, be sure to use them sparingly or don't overuse them because if you do, it can make your video look cheap and amateur. So to find these, hover up to the upper left hand corner and click on effects. On the lower right, under Toolbox, you'll see your video effects and transitions and all those other things appear. If you want to use any of these effects or titles, simply click and drag it onto your timeline. To change the features or the settings, just double click and a little panel will appear on the right hand side. And now you can change things such as what the text says, the text font, the color, the angle, and all those things. If you don't want the title, then go ahead and select and delete. As for video transitions, it's the same thing. Just click and drag, but make sure that you add these to the beginning or the ends of your clip. This is an example with the cross dissolve transition, which is the one that I use the most because it's relatively simple and straightforward. If you want to change the length of the transition so that it's longer or shorter, just hover your cursor over the transition and click and drag to the left or the right to change the duration. Now say you're cutting up a long continuous clip with speaking and you might make a mistake or maybe you transition from one speaker to another and you've got kind of an awkward piece that you want to cut out. If you do this, then definitely don't add a transition. It's best to instead patch with B-roll if possible. For step number four, we're now going to go on to edit the sound. If you're more advanced and know your way around audio editing tools, you can do this in the Fairlight tab. But you can also do some quick and easy audio editing in the Edit tab. And that's what I'm going to do here. So the first thing you want to do is display your audio mixer. Go up to Workspace, Show Panel in Workspace, and select Mixer. The mixer has three audio levels, one for main dialogue, another for music if you have any, and another for overall audio. So you can use the audio mixer to adjust the audio levels for all of your clips at once, or you can adjust the audio for individual clips. To do this, hover your mouse over the clip until you see the audio line and click and drag to make it bigger or smaller. If you want to adjust the audio on just one part of a clip, such as the middle of the clip, then hit the Alt or Option key and click on the audio track and select the blade tool. You can use that to cut out the audio portion and then click on the arrow or the A key on the keyboard to adjust the levels for that portion. To determine the best audio levels, play back your clip and watch the audio levels in the mixer. It's okay if the audio levels hit the green, yellow, and a little bit of the red, but it is not okay if your audio levels hit the very top. This is called audio peaking when the sound is basically distorted. At this point, you may want to add in any music if you plan to use it. It's definitely optional, but if you do want to use music, you can just click and drag it onto your timeline from your desktop. Once your music track is in your timeline, you can now cut as needed using those tools that I mentioned earlier, and you can also adjust the volume. Now there's no right or wrong audio level for music, but if it's going to be background music for your main audio track that you're going to be speaking over, then you definitely want to make sure that it's not too loud. Usually I'll have my music at negative 20 decibels or even negative 28 or negative 31 if it's playing in the background as I'm speaking. When it comes to music selection, you can use any music you want, but if you're planning to upload that video to YouTube and possibly make some money on your video, then you definitely want to use royalty free music. We always use Epidemic Sound. That's where we get 100% of our music for both this channel as well as our travel vlogging channel. There is a fee to use the service, but it's really reasonable. It's only a monthly or annual fee, and it's a really great place to find a diverse variety of music. And this video, by the way, is not sponsored by Epidemic Sound. We just really love their music selection, and we do pay to use the service. If you do want to get a free trial to try it out for yourself, you can use our link in the description 
description below. And the final step for your audio editing is to polish it by using audio effects or transitions if desired. So to do this, go up to the effects library and choose audio FX. So there are some audio effects that you can play with and see how it changes your audio. But again, I wouldn't choose too many of these because then your audio can get really distorted. Typically, the only audio effect that I consistently add to every single one of my videos is a little crossfade at the end of every clip. So to do this, it helps to expand the track height of your audio so you can really see what's going on. But I'm going to zoom into my green audio clip and hover my mouse over the upper right hand corner and just click and drag to the left. And this creates a little crossfade at the end of my audio. For the fifth step, we're going to color grade or color correct our footage. For this, we're going to go over to the color tab. Now this might look really intimidating and that's because there are professional level color grading tools within Resolve. But I'm not going to go over everything because that's a lot and this is a beginner oriented tutorial. So let's start with a walkthrough of the space. In the middle, we have an area to preview the video that we're color correcting and below that are thumbnails of all of the clips that we have to work with. To the right are the nodes or the layers of all of the adjustments that we make and at the very bottom are the color adjustment tools. Tools. So the first thing we want to do is enable scopes to give you a visual representation of all of the colors and the lighting in the shot. Go over to the lower right hand area and click on the middle button that says scopes. Below that is a drop down menu with some options on how to present those scopes. By default, I think it's waveforms, but I think that parade is a little bit easier way to visualize everything. Next, go over to the bottom left section and click on the color wheels button. You'll now see four different color wheels that you can adjust to fine tune your shot. Let's start with lift. You can drag the bottom slider to the left or the right to control how bright the dark areas are. As you're doing this, notice that the scopes panel on the right is changing as you move the lift wheel. Levels move up as the shot gets brighter and they move down as it gets darker. As a rule of thumb, you want to prevent the scope levels from hitting the top or the bottom. If this happens, then your shot is probably too dark or too bright. Next, we want to go over to the gain wheel and use this to control the highlights or the bright parts of the shot. It's the same idea as before of dragging the bottom slider to the left or the right to control the setting. Do the same thing for the gamma area, which adjusts the midtones. And finally, offset would raise and lower everything in the shot. If you want to adjust the colors in your shot, you can zoom into the middle of a color wheel circle and click on the little dot that's directly in the middle and just drag that around and notice how your colors change. You can set this to whatever suits your taste the best, but again, I wouldn't go too crazy with it. Above and below the color wheels are a few other settings that you can tweak, such as contrast, saturation, highlights, and shadows. If you color grade one clip and you want to apply that same color grade to multiple clips, you can easily do that. Just go over to the node section for the clip that you just graded and hit the command or control C to copy it. Then hover over the clip that you want to apply the color grade to and hit command or control V to paste the effects. This approach works really well if you shot all of your clips in relatively the same conditions. But for us, when we travel vlog, a lot of our shots are shot in completely different lighting conditions. So it's not always the most helpful to do this. But again, it really depends on your shooting style. So after you've gone through all of the steps and you have a final video on your timeline that you think is good to go, then it's time for the sixth and final step, which is export. For this one, we're going to go down to the Deliver workspace. On the far left column, you'll see an area called Render Settings. By default, this is set to Custom Export, and you can certainly dial in your own settings if you prefer. But you can also scroll to the right and see some presets for some popular uploading platforms such as YouTube, Vimeo, Twitter, and the like. For us, we usually select the YouTube option. So if you click on that, you'll see a few less settings appear. And this can make it a lot easier to export your video for that platform. For resolution and frame rate, you want to make sure to select the exact same settings that you selected for your project. In our case, it's Ultra HD, which is 4K, and the frame rate is 24. I leave the rest of the settings alone, but now I'm going to select a name for my project, as well as a location of where the video should be exported to. 
On the bottom, there is also an option to upload directly to YouTube or the platform of your choice. But I personally don't do this because I want to preview my final video to make sure that there are no mistakes. After you have everything set, hit the Add to Render queue on the bottom. Notice that your project now shows up on the right-hand column in an area called Render Queue. And now you have to hit the Render All button to finish the job. Otherwise, your video will not actually start rendering. After your video exports, make sure that you play back and preview the exported version of your video to check for any possible mistakes. If there are any mistakes, you can always go back and re-edit the video and export again. But once you have a video that you're pretty happy with, well, it's time to upload it and share it with the world. Anyway, I hope this was a really helpful tutorial. It was definitely beginner oriented, or at least the intention was to be beginner oriented. And so you can definitely deep dive into any of the features that I just mentioned and make a much longer video on DaVinci Resolve. Thanks for watching and let me know in the comments what other videos you'd like to see in the future.